Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. Today my client model is Jacob. Jacob works in the chair next to me at the Young American Salon in Tustin, California. Jacob also plays in a handful of bands and I am legitimately a fan of all of his music. So check him out on Instagram at Primary Jake. Um, he's also really cool at hair. Like he's just, he, he's, he gets it. You can tell just looking at his style. Like he's a, he can pull anything off. And you know, if you're the type that wants to try to pull anything off, like he's worth checking out. So today we're going to give him a haircut that is somewhat loosely based on like the nineties, Tom York haircut, um, similar to what he has, but just shorter. And, um, something that I think might be fun about watching this video is, you know, I, I want these videos to be a realistic slice of um, like a representation of what I actually do in the salon. I don't want everything to be so perfectly um, curated and structured that like everything is an over-engineered section God haircut. Um, I actually, I do a lot of scissor over comb. And so this entire haircut actually is going to be scissor over comb because the shape of the haircut is, you know, somewhat round. And to be honest, it's so much easier and faster for me, even with a texturizing scissor as I'm using right now, to cut a, a round ball of hair this way than it is to pull up individual sections and do it like one little section at a time. Now, I could do it like that, and I feel like for most tutorials, that's how they would show you to do it. Like, here, take a section, take a section, move your guide. I'm just going to do scissor over comb because that's what I would actually do here. You'll see that as I'm doing this with the texturizing scissor, let me point out this particular scissor removes a lot of hair. Like when I first started using it, I was like scared I was gonna bald somebody by accident because if I take probably four or five snips and in, in about the same area, I've cut off all of the hair there, which is nice for taking down length in the way that I am here. So as I'm going through and working with this scissor, you'll see that I, I wiggle it and move it as I'm working. Um, this video was played back in two to four times speed at different times here. And so I'm, I'm definitely moving the thumb quite a bit, but I'm also, I'm kind of letting the scissor drift back and forth along the spine of my comb. And I find by doing that, I get a little bit more variation in the lengths as I knock the, the hair down. So if I were to completely like not move the scissor, if it was like perfectly still, I find that I would get too clean a line and it's almost like, why am I using a texturizing scissor? I'm getting just the same result almost as a regular scissor, but taking a lot more time to get there. And so as I'm moving to cut the top here, I took the corners and I combed them up to use them as a guide to see how long to cut the middle. I'm mostly going for just kind of a round grown out circle of hair here, uh, but it is ever so slightly longer on top just because I don't know, it's honestly, it's like muscle memory and trying to do this haircut and round the corners with scissor over comb. It takes like, I have to really think about what I'm doing because autopilot, I want to kind of flare the scissors up and out at the top of the head to create a square shape, which is like 99% of haircuts that I end up doing. And so to not square up the corners and to take it round over the top of the corner, I actually have to really think about it and it feels like, like wrong. So here in the back, I got a little bit ahead of myself. I got really excited to cut this little mullet area here. And so rather than connecting that side panel near the temple, like uh, rather than working from there around like I should have done, like I'm beginning to do here, I got ahead of myself and I jumped to the back. But what I really should have done is just, you know, for, for the purpose of not pulling his hair so much, I, I should have found my guide and used it to cut my next section of hair. And so what I'm doing as I scissor over comb this entire head is I'm looking at that red portion there in the tip of my comb and I'm seeing how long it is and that tells me where to cut the green portion of that line that was just moving there. And so anytime I'm dragging my comb through the hair here, I can see what I just cut and I, I, it tells me where to cut what I'm about to cut. So by jumping ahead, like I did a minute ago, I kind of was like, wait a minute, I don't have a guide to go off of here. And then I had to go back to use the tip of my comb to hold the previously cut hair to use as a guide. But now that I've worked my way over to that sort of mullet zone there, I can actually get to work on it. And so what I'm doing down here, I do want to leave the tiniest little itty bitty baby mullet. So as I'm coming in to rough out the shape of the haircut and knock down the length all around, I'm elevating the hair from the bottom of the hairline upward, and that's going to leave it longer, progressively longer. The further from the bottom of the hairline the hair travels up to be cut, the longer it will become. And so that little bit down there is actually kind of layered. And um, once I get that length established in there, I can be, and I can continue to scissor over comb the rest of the head here to go again for that round shape. And same thing in the back here, like I want so badly just um, to leave a square shape over the occ uh, occipital bone. 
And it's like taking everything in me to go, no, round, go up and over that corner. It's kind of a rookie move when you're brand new to cutting hair to accidentally cut up and over the corner. But for this haircut, we want to deliberately do that. You can see very round shape here, minus some of those long pieces from the left side that were popping up that, that you know, I didn't realize were popping up in that still shot. I'm getting again ahead of myself. I'm like, cool, I'll just knock out this whole mullet zone. Like part of the reason I wanted to bang this part out before um, mowing down the top of the haircut is like working with the longer length down there and then going back up to the shorter length, it's really easy for my comb to get kind of tangled up in there. And so if I dial in the longer length and then comb it out of my way like I just did, now I can start working through the shorter length without my comb getting caught up in the mullet. And so um, that's why I got ahead of myself there. That one worked and it had a purpose and it didn't slow me down. And so I'm, I'm going really fast forward at the end part here because just more of the same, more of the same. In fact, that reminds me um, coming up in future videos, I think I might change the format that I'm doing on these just a little bit to be less repetitive. You know, the left side of the head usually looks like the right side of the head. So I'll probably start cutting that out or cutting it down much shorter. As I go to blow dry Jake's hair, I'm using high heat and high power to remove the moisture. It is worth noting, and look at his hair sticking out around his cowlick at the crown. Um, once the hair is dry, it's going to look like a fluffy baby bird. If you have fluffy baby bird hair, it doesn't mean that you blow dried it wrong or cut it wrong. It means that you didn't blow dry it long enough. So now that his hair has been dry for a minute, I'm going to keep going with high heat and low power. And I'm just going to focus the heat all around into those hairs until they start to... Um, until I start to seal the cuticle. And what will happen then, you can see it happening right now, is that fluffy, fuzzy baby bird hair will start to separate and turn into little bits of spikes all over the place. And now that I have my sealed cuticle all the way around, I can go in and continue refining the haircut. So I'm gonna shave this kind of neck fuzz underneath here, which will allow that mullet to hang more freely and um, give me a better idea of what the hair is going to do as I'm refining the edges. So I don't wanna go super tidy on these edges. I don't wanna get on an edger and just like line it up or anything. I'm gonna keep the same kind of soft vibe using my texturizing scissor here. Um, and so I, I do want to confine the haircut into a neat enough shape that it's like, oh yeah, that's a haircut, but I don't want to go like so tidy that it's like, oh, that guy just left the barbershop. Uh, down here at the back, I am leaving some length more than I would on the sides. And you can see there is an itty bitty baby tiny mullet there, uh, but I'm not leaving all of the length there. I'm kind of dialing it down to taste here. Like, I don't want it, like one thing that I've, um, I heard a saying somewhere, I didn't invent this, but I heard somebody ask, do you want your hair to whisper different or scream different? And to me, this tiny little itty bitty baby mullet just whispers different. And I think, you know, most of the time, most of the time whispering different is cooler than screaming different. Now that the hair is dry, I can see a little more easily some of the inconsistencies that I put into my shape. And I'm gonna go back with a really wide tooth comb to just refine some of these little areas a little bit here. And the reason I like the really wide tooth comb when I do this is it just adds a little bit more texture. Everywhere that the comb broadly separates the hair, it's going to create just a little bit of wavy unevenness. As opposed to if I had used like a really fine tooth comb or even no comb at all, the, there wouldn't be any of that separation in there. And so maybe nobody will ever notice this, but it just mentally I'm like, okay, I know if these hairs are all very separated as I'm cutting them, it'll lead to more separation in the end result. As I'm refining, I'm also, you know, I'm trying to hit everything from different angles, coming at it from top to bottom, from left to right, and just making sure I didn't leave any high points that were too high or, or, or too bold or too prominent. Now that I've got kind of a fuzzy Q-tip ball on his head, I'm gonna go in with my regular scissor and do some deep point cutting all throughout. The reason I'm doing this with scissor over comb is that his hair is pretty short. And if I were to go in and like grab section, section, section with my fingers, I wouldn't be able to cut deep enough to do what I'm trying to do here. And so this way, like I only have the comb preventing me from hitting his scalp to where like, if I have my fingers in there, like I, I wanna go deeper than I can get with my fingers, but not all the way to the scalp. And uh, this is also, it just happens to be a lot faster to do it over comb like this. Although that's not the reason I'm doing it. Sometimes maybe I would do it to be faster, but here it's just, it just works a lot more easily this way. At this point, I'm going to blow dry his hair with cold air just to get all the loose bits out of there so he's not itchy. For product, I reached for ADH Dry. This is available at uh, like a couple hundred barber shops in the US and the, uh, throughout the UK and Ireland. If you are not near any of those salons or barber shops, then you can get it at adhbrand.com. So what I'm doing with this product is rubbing it very thin on my hands and then kind of reaching through the hair to rub it onto the scalp. And I'm trying to move the hair a lot while I put it on because I say this in almost every video, but the more you move the hair, the more natural it tends to look, the more lived in it tends to look to where if I put product in there and they just like scrunch it one time and leave it alone, it looks a little bit wiggy. It looks a little bit too styled. Now in the front here, I love that Jake's hair has a little bit of a strong cowlick. I'm leaning into that. People 
tend to not like their cowlicks. But the reason people don't like their cowlicks, I think, is because they can't control them, not because they look bad. I actually think cowlicks look really cool. And another note about Jake here, you know, you might look at this cut on him and go, wow, he has just like a cool look. He can pull that off, but I couldn't pull off a look like that. It is my belief that every person has some kind of hairstyle that they can just pull off that most people can't. And it's just a matter of finding that for you. For Jake, it happens to be this messy ball of shards of spikes and just, you know, chaotic hair. It just works really well on him. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're into this sort of thing.